In this final episode, we learn which last critical update is necessary to get to 10,000 RPM with a 4 liter AMC. I think one thing we did skip over when we were uh, talking about the harmonics and the valve train um, was the push rod. You got to tell your push rod Ooh, story. Yeah, push rod, <laughs> yes. Well, you know, after I retired, I went to work for Diamond Racing Piston. Mm -hmm. And I worked there for six months. It, just, it was just, uh, I was helping out my buddy, Butch Elkins. Butch Elkins and I were flow, flow guys. And we mm -hmm. used to talk a lot. And he did, a, he was doing a lot of NASCAR heads once upon a time, back in the 80s, before the NASCAR guys started doing their own development. Right. He was doing. He was doing NASCAR. Him and uh, a couple other guys. And he was one of the best silverhead guys I've ever met in my life. His work was so good. I mean, it was just perfection. It was like it was done on a CNC machine. It was so good. And uh, and the manifolds that they did, it would look like it was all machined, inside and out. I mean, it just were beautiful. Oh, okay, I get off. I get off the track. Push rod, push, push rod technology. When I was working with Alkin, Bob Fox was the owner of Diamond Racing, Diamond Racing Piston. He also started a new company called Spintron. Mm -hmm. Spintron was the it invention that every NASCAR team bought. It was a motored engine. It would take a big electric motor and it would run the valve train of an engine. It would be a bare block with bare, with slugs stuck in there, in the bores. It would be uh, it would be mounted to a fixture that had it looked like a dyno almost, and it had a, a flange that bolted up to the back of the crank. Yep. And uh, then, then it ran through the valve train, through the gear drive and all whatever you were using into the crank. It was a dummy crank. It spin up, and they had uh, like test equipment like where you can look at the digital displays and, and stuff and you could see you could also you know monitor valve train dynamics as the, the engine spun up and they they were right. spinning the engine up and they wanted an engine that would go at least 9500 rpm they were looking for 10,000 but they wanted to go at least 9500 said so that was the new goal you know for like nascar and stuff they were on to 9500 9500 so they were trying to come up with 9500 valve train and this was at diamond racing so this was well actually it wasn't part of diamond it was it was you know, another company but they're all bob fox was a control of everything so it had spintron and diamond piston so anyway there i said one day he come into the flow lab and he came into the office and he says how's the the fixturing coming i says yeah we're almost done he said good he said and i said you I said, you running tests on Spintron right now? And he said, yeah. And I said, do uh, you learn anything? And he goes, that's funny you should ask me that. I just learned something about push rods. And I said, what's that? He says, the, the push rods that you're buying and putting in your race cars? I said, yeah, they're all junk. I said, what do you mean they're all junk? This was like, this was 2001. He said, what did you have in that four liter when you were running? I said, a three eight. He said, well, how long was it? And I said, I don't know, 9.55. He says, oh, my God. He said, you, he said, you're probably losing a tenth and a half with that push rod. <laughs> I said, don't tell me this now. He said, well, what we learned on, on a V8 Chevrolet, okay, now the push rod on the V8 Chevrolet is like 7,800, 7 7.8 yeah. inches long. He says, not that Way long. Shorter. He says, you're long. He says, your push rod is long. He said, think about that, you know, it's, it's and, so, and I said, well, how thick is the wall? He asked me the thickness of the wall. Of the, and I said, oh, 80, oh, 83. He said, oh, God, that thing was a piece of junk. He said, you were losing a ton of performance with the push rod. He <clears> said, we, we went through push rods. And we were, you know, we were, we started experiment with the push rod because we were eating up the valve springs and blaming the valve spring. And then we got better push rods in there because one of the guys said, hey, we, how come we're not addressing the push rod? So we had the three eighths push rods in there, like everybody else is running. The, you know, three eighths with a skinny wall, you know, eighty wall or so. He said we were doing right. that, and we, yeah. they were chrome molly because you don't know, figure chrome molly don't bend very. You know, they were really stiff. So, and that's what we had, but you know, it didn't matter. 
He says, but when you get under the strain of an engine that's operating and, and trying to get maximum performance out of it, I said, you're, you're starting to vibrate everything. He said, and the vibration is what really starts destroying everything, and you don't even know it. He said, uh, you could be losing valve lift, you could be, you know, bending and wearing holes, whether you don't want to wear holes. You see, you'll see Mark in the cylinder head, like where a push rod goes through, and it's rubbing at it, and you're looking at it, and it's an eighth of an inch away from it. You'll see a wear mark in there. You say, well, how the hell did that happen? You know, I went through that, not with the four liter, but with another engine. But a anyway, uh, he said, uh, we ordered a bunch of push rods from like Manton and a bunch of them from different places. And he said, comp cam. He said, we, he said, you know, make us, uh, you know, make us a seven sixteenths, make us a half inch, a thin wall, thick wall, you know, they they've tried all kinds of stuff. They found that to, to achieve 9,500 RPM, they needed at least a 7 145 wall. And I looked at the guys and I said, he says, this, he says, these push rods are inferior. He said, he said, we can get 95, we can't get 10,000 out of it, but we got 9,500 out of this, this half inch or the 7 16 push rod. They tried half inch and he said, the thin wall half inch, we're okay, you get 9,000. But he said the 7 16 for some reason with a thicker wall was better. And it was straight, it was a straight, you know, it was a straight shot. So he, he said, you know, uh, I'm, I said, I see a business opportunity here. So I'm gonna start a new business called Trend Push Rods and I'm gonna make the push rods that are gonna be killer for virtually every application. He says, I'm gonna make them so that they're, they're right in stock. You can get them from a like a, I don't know seven seven inch all the way to God I don't know what a ten inch something like that. He said that wow. anybody is like a Hemi or something would use something like eleven inch or over eleven inch long push rod on the exhaust. He said we'll make those you know special. But if I get a big demand for them, he said we'll stock you know eleven point four inch or whatever the hell they are. And he said. We can have the small block Chevy guys, we can have infill inline six guys, we can have V6 guys, we can have everybody in that range. And we'll all use the same thing. A seven sixteenth, one sixty five wall, double taper with a five you know, five sixteenth ball end. And that'll cover just about everybody on the planet. That's what he started doing. And boy, I'll tell you what, he sells a lot of push rods. Wow, yeah. I wonder what I would have done with the uh, with the car. Oh in our Jeep? Yeah, oh, I told I told Charlie when I found out about it. I said, "Hey, Charlie, I know where the problem was. What? Push rods. Nah, there's nothing wrong with this push rods. They're always straight when I took them out. I rolled them. I said, "Yeah, I know, but it's, they're bending under performance. When you're putting the pressure on them, you're bending them." He right. goes, "How oh, the heck are you bend chrome molly steel?" I said, "Cause it's not thick enough." I said, "If we had had those trend push rods that they're making now, those double taper." Seven sixteenths from Molly, they're one sixty five wall. I said if we put those push rods in that engine, those 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 instead of those three eighths, nine fifty five long job, oh eighty three, I said we'd have knocked off a tenth and a half. Wow. That thing would have run in, been running in the forties. And he yeah, and he true. was like, He's you're kidding. I said, No, you know me, I'm not kidding. We'd have been we'd have been able to run forties with that thing. You imagine what it would have been like if I'd have put those in originally, but they didn't make them then. But if I could have put a, even a half inch push rod in there with a with a thicker wall in it, it would have picked up. Well, yeah, you had everything else figured out. Now, with the series complete, I would encourage you all to let Rick and I know in the comments what information would best help you build a racing four liter AMC. Thanks for listening.